So I had a great question about the rule of 78, and I thought that I would go ahead and create a short video because the answer may benefit several students in the class. Um, it, the textbook did not really elaborate on it or go into uh, to detail. There are some good YouTube videos uh, on it, so don't be afraid to Google information like this. There are some good, good uh, websites, that type of thing. Here's the question that we were addressing. This person gets a loan of $3,000 with an annual interest rate of 6%, and Shelley repays the loan in 12 monthly payments of $258 per month. Now, the key thing I'm going to say, stop and say right here is that there's 12 monthly payments and then it's paid off. So this loan occurred in a one-year time period, and this only applies the rule of 78 to, to a one-year time period, okay? So the total amount of interest she pays, they tell us, is $96. Under the rule of 78, what is the amount of interest included in her first payment? Now, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to throw you a curveball here initially because I'm not using the rule of 78s initially. The first thing I did is, also because I teach the software apps for business class, is I said, what if I did this more as an Excel table where I could see exactly how much of my you know, loan, my, my payment amount was going to principal and how much to interest, I might want to see that. And so what I did is, uh, first of all, I just typed out the amounts here. You know, uh, I have a total cost of 3000 Maybe if it was this was a car or, a, you know, I don't know, some appliance or something like that, you could put some money down. We didn't do that. Um, so the amount that I owe is $3,000, and the interest rate is uh, 6%. And so this is a one-year timeline. Again, that's kind of important. Okay, so what I did here, and I thought this was a kind of cool thing to just very briefly show you. I'm not walking you through this payment function at this particular junction. Um, is I used Excel's payment function. Now, I'm just going to click to an empty cell for a minute and click this payment function. And you could type in something like monthly payments or, you know, or go searching through it. But here, where it says payment, it explains that this calculates the payment for a loan based on a constant payment and a constant interest rate, right? If I were to select that, I have it selected, you see that, and I click OK, then it prompts me for the values to put in. And each time I click in one of these blocks to enter a value, it tells me what I need to put in there. If the values are in bold, then it's required. I have to put something in there. If they're not in bold, see how these two are not in bold, then I can put something in there if I want, but I don't have to. So the biggest th challenge, if you decide to explore this particular function, is to make sure that your units of measure stay the same. For example, we often talk about monthly payments, but yet we talk about an annual inter interest rate. So what I would do when I'm going to enter the rate, and you know you can type 6% here in the rate, but why when it's right here and I could click on it? And see how I put the cell in there? That way I can experiment with different interest rates. Anyway, and so um, I would divide by 12. But maybe I'm going a little too deep into this, more so than I, than I should. Um, let me cancel out of that and go back over here. And what Excel determined was that in order for me to calculate or to uh, pay this $3,000 loan off in 12 months, I would have to make a payment of $258.20 a, uh, a month. And so what I did is I said, okay, $3,000 minus my monthly payment, and that gives me an ending balance, right? And so I can see since my, my balance is going down each month, see how it's going down, right? Then I can see that my interest is also going to go down. And using the, the monthly payment amount that Excel helped us figure out, I will be exactly at zero at the end of, of 12 months. And this is telling me that my monthly interest rate again, given constant payments and constant interest, would be about $15. Now, from that multiple choice question, though, $15 was not one of my choices. So right away, I know that something's not right. <clears throat> so, you know, what they're saying is under the rule of 78. And so they're giving us a little information to, um, to kind of guesstimate it or to figure it out. And that's a great thing about the rule of 78. You learned in the past about the, uh, I think in chapter one, about the rule of 72s. So now here we are taking the shortcut with the rule of 78s. So I'm changing tabs on my workbook. And here's the exact same uh, problem, right? 
So there's my amount owed is 3,000. My interest rate is 6%. But the most important thing is I have 12 monthly payments of $258 per month, right? So I know that. So I just kind of played around. Okay, and here's my interest, 96. This is how much I paid. Um, whoops. Oh, I see I have an error in my formula. I'm going to have to, I've got something going on here. I'll fix this in just a second. Let's, let's go back through it. Um, okay, so this is what the rule of 78 tells us. We're going to pay this off in 12 months. So all I did here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right? And it tells us that in the, the first month, that first payment, we pay 12 78 is the amount we pay in interest. In the second month, we pay 11 78 of interest. In the, ten, in the third month, I'm sorry, let me keep my number straight. In the third month, we pay 10. So see how I'm counting down here? That's how much interest, 178 is how much of the interest you pay in the 12th month, okay? Now, um, I put, the, I wanted to display this as 12, high, you know, divided by 78, so um, instead of mathematically, so, uh, but I want to do some math with this, so I converted it in this cell here, and I said, let me go ahead and take 12 and divide by 78. You can see on this address bar that that's what I did. And you know, what happened from that is I found out, you know, I, I converted to a percentage that in that first month, I'm going to pay 15.38% interest, right? Now, we know, I'm just kind of showing you around so you think through this a little bit. I know this is a lot of information. Our problem told us that we were paying $258 each month. So there we are each month. And sure enough, if I added all that together, I would end up with $3,096. And according to our word problem, that $96 is exactly how much I paid in interest. Okay, you know, we're just getting familiar with the situation, right? So what they want to know is, I'm sorry, let me go back up here. Under the rule of 78s, what is the amount of interest included in her first payment? Well, the amount of interest, I did this uh, mathematically here, Here's the interest, the $96 they told us they paid, right, times what we figured out with the rule of 78, which was simply 12, divided by 78, so 15.38%, times that interest. And that gives us this value. And what I did is I did not copy it there. So using the rule of 78, what we can find out is that the first month we paid 12 78ths times the interest paid, and that gives us the dollar amount. Does that make sense? It's kind of a, a way to estimate it, and when you look at it, $14.77, that's pretty close to this constant monthly, constant interest rate that we were paying. Here, $13.78 is what uh, Excel, what we calculated, saying there's a month, a constant monthly payment and a constant interest rate. And what do we say here? 13.54. So I'm sorry. 13.78 to 13.54. That's not too bad. 12.31 to 12.56. So I hope I didn't complicate things here. But here's the simple answer to the question. We can find out how much interest is paid in in, in any given month of a one-year loan using the rule of 78, which just counts down like this: 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Each one divided by 78 and uh, multiply that, you know, uh, multiply that out, and you, or divide it out, and you'll get the interest rate. Multiply that by the total interest paid, and then you'll know. If you decided to pay it off early, then you would just add the amounts together, and you would see how much interest that you saved. Okay? So I hope this helps. It's a little longer explanation, but uh, hopefully it gave you some depth to the problem. Thanks for the question. Enjoy.